Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Movies by McManus podcast, uh, the podcast where we break down movies, comics, TV, books, whatever kind of media you're into, the context of who created it, and what effect it's trying to have on the world. Uh, I'm your host, Greg. I'm with my brother, Mike. How's it going? How's it going? Today, we're going to be breaking down 2021, uh, though I worked on it in 2019, The Many Saints of Newark. Uh, This is... Something pre- happened in between those years, I feel like. And it, uh, oh, the pandemic. Oh, right. yeah. And there was a long period in between that where the entire world went to shit. Um, so this was like, th- this was a film I was like so excited to be hired on because I was such a huge fan of The Sopranos. Uh, it's probably like the most talked about just piece of media uh, on this channel, at least maybe in just like the New York general, uh, the New York area in general, uh, especially New Jersey. You know, when I I went to college, I went to film school at Montclair State and just like. It was, like, The Sopranos and, like, Bruce Springsteen of just how much um, those things meant to the people of New Jersey. Um, What it means to just Italian Americans in general um, can't be, like, understated just how great the show was. And I, I was super excited when I heard that they were filming it on Long Island in the studios in Bethpage. I was very excited. And then I got to work on it. This is going to be an issue all all You're, night. We're having <laughs> issues with oh, what my brother's stand. Oh shit! Oh shit! We can keep rolling. We we can keep rolling. That's fine. I'm gonna keep talking. <laughs> one thing, one thing that I'll say, if if I may, as uh, as we're getting the cosmetic surgery on the audio here, um, you know, without. Without sounding uh, too corny, just like how proud I am of you for you know following your dream in this Thank film you. industry, and that's you know why we kind of started this show is yeah. n- not just to be any other channel that's just breaking down movies, but you know the fact that you have that real world experience, and for that to kind of you know culminate in let's be honest, like your. Dr- you're very young still, obviously, but mm-hmm. your dream job up until this point, as far as, you know, this was a show that you grew up being obsessed with and yeah. still to this day, like, have such reverence for. And to be able to, not only to be able to be, like, working in the industry that you set out to to work in, you know, with your film degree and, and everything leading up to that. And even I can remember you as a kid, like, writing your own scripts and yeah different things and like to to see that come full circle to work on the sopranos is like pretty I, pretty just unbelievable i remember just like the feeling that i got walking into uh you know the satriali set yeah i and remember walking I into there. the Sat- satriali set and just like couldn't believe that like i was back there you know yeah that i um and you know we and we got my rap gift of the the sweatshirt i got for being on the film crew um <laughs> which thank <laughs> thankfully we have some evidence of it because they fucking fucked up otherwise yeah i i don't we, we don't have to get into it we won't it, get into but, that but. yeah <laughs> um so let, I don't know what we're doing here tonight <laughs> folks are you going to hold it is the sound okay if he it just sounds if, probably fine all right, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep rolling. We have a sp- we have a special <laughs> announcement at the end of the show, anyway. So this is a fun one. We um, uh, um we got picked up for a third season, ten million dollars. <laughs> yeah, but we're gonna turn it down like Chappelle. <laughs> Touch um, the mic. Yeah, the mic. Um, uh, we can. Okay. We can get into, like, the actual movie because, like, what I was saying is, um... touching it because it kept falling down. Saying this is a Sopranos prequel is almost misleading because while a lot of the... It's a lot of the same characters, obviously the same sets. Obviously, we see Tony Soprano in it. Um, This is its own contained story, though. And I was saying where... 
when I was watching kind of the trailers and mostly like the movie posters, when you see it's Sticky Maltesanti and they say, see who made Tony Soprano, they were kind of building it up like it was going to be a Tony Soprano origin story. That's not what this movie is. And this movie, you know, it doesn't take the typical prequel route of the things that you're expecting to see uh, in a prequel. Um, you know, think about, like, the Star Wars prequel trilogy, you know, if you're somebody who's into Star Wars, my brother is not, but the Star Wars prequel trilogy, it's all about Darth Vader, and you see exactly how the Empire is created, how Darth Vader turns evil, and that's not what this movie is doing, and I was looking at those trailers, and I was just like, that's not what this movie is, it's not going to be a Tony Soprano origin story. Well, you know what the problem was, was they they needed to, whether David Chase intended on this or not, um... <sighs> The uh, at least HBO from a marketing perspective was of course not going to let yeah. up on the Sopranos angle. Yes, but of then course. what you do with that is you set people up for thinking like you know not just for the anticipation of oh my god it's like a resurrection or it's a continuation of some kind of Sopranos yeah. verse thing, but you're 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 it's almost like an impossible task to. To, to do something on that level in yeah. one movie and then but also like they weren't very explicit about like this isn't a Tony Soprano origin story yeah and it's not like a it's just it was just kind of like its own thing in Sopranos universe exactly exactly it's its own it's not really a prequel it's its own thing in the universe of the Sopranos and I remember it after the movie came out, I was getting texts from friends of mine, and I was just, and they were all just like, basically saying the same thing of just like, I like the movie, I like the story is telling, I like you know kind of the social commentary that it's trying to say, but it doesn't really like you don't really see what turned Tony Soprano to become a gangster, and I was like, no, not at all. Yeah, be, but. That's because the advertising was saying it was going to do that. That's yeah, not they, what the they, movie is. They kind of fucked up in that regard. You know? They they you know. they fucked up on a multitude of levels because you know, and let's just be honest, like this is not a good movie. It's not a great movie. You could maybe say it's when I saw it in theaters and we all went out, our family went to see it and like because we're very happy, you know, obviously that it was being released after all this time and it was something that you were involved in. And I was kind of overtaken with, like, that magnitude of the situation and seeing it in theaters that when it started getting bad reviews, the bad reviews started coming in and even some friends of mine were saying things and asking my opinion and kind of, like, trashing it. I was taken aback. I was... But on a second viewing on HBO Max... It's 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 weak, you know. It's I, it's 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 not a great. It's it it's it does a lot of things that the show itself was better than. Like it it plays into I, I like, the fan. See, fiction. I liked it even better the second time. I didn't. I I liked its it. flaws were more were more apparent to me the second viewing. I I'd say its flaws were more apparent its first viewing. Uh, I went into this movie knowing that it was getting bad reviews. See, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, I went into this movie knowing that it was getting bad reviews. And the thing about it was, like, the the problems that I had with it um, on first viewing, I didn't really have the second viewing. Some of the problems I had with it were some of the acting I thought wasn't great the first time and then the second time things just seemed a bit smoother um i you know michael gandolfini i like um i i i think he's a good actor but i don't think he's like a leading man type actor no he doesn't have any sort of charisma at all i and he I, doesn't and he's not his personality the only thing he has in common with his father is the fucking is that, name. Yeah. That's it. And it's not a... I'm not comparing them as actors, because that wouldn't be fair. It's his first... But 
there's no menace. There's no. There's no. There's nothing that would make you believe that this guy is, becomes Tony Soprano. Right. Right. He's a. He's soft. You know, like he's not. He's not even mean. Like he's not even. He doesn't have a hard edge to him. He doesn't have any grit to him at yeah. all. He's like a soft, innocent kid who's like right. looking up to his uncle, and that's all you get. Right. You get nothing about. You get nothing about how he doesn't even like. You get nothing about his upbringing other than he's around mafia people, but it, there's nothing. It doesn't give you anything in the way of like what went into making Tony Soprano. No, no. It's I, about I, this like yes. isolated time with Dicky Moltisanti and and the DeMeo family. Like then that's kind of it. I I agree, but. I agree because the Tony Soprano that we see here, I mean, he has 25 years left to become that person. And when you say like That's you, the problem with the timeline too. Because his his character in this movie goes from being like a really young kid to like a 16-year-old. Yeah. But Tony Soprano in the real world of Sopranos, by the time he was 16, he was borderline like robbing poker games and shit. Right, right. Like he the, this was the not the timeline is a little weird. The timeline doesn't work. Like yeah. it didn't it didn't work to get Michael Gandolfini involved. He was like he was either like too old for where they were trying to portray him. Yeah. And like it just didn't it it just was kind of a mess, man. I I don't know. I know that's disappointing to no, hear, but uh, no, well, I have to, I, we have to be objective, like as much no, as and, possible. No, and trying to be objective as possible, it's I, hard. I don't. I don't really know if I agree with that. the t The timeline issues, you know, obviously they're apparent. I don't know if they bother me so much. You know, the fact that Silvio is definitely older than he's supposed to be um, doesn't bother me too much. Um, yeah, because apparently Silvio and Tony are around the same age. Yeah, and in this one, first of all, the way I would have done it, the the only character, if you're trying to be like 100% to the timeline, the only character where it makes sense that they would be there is Pauly. Yeah, and e everyone who is playing a character that we know was just doing a bad impersonation of them. Like, yeah. That's sorry. I mean, even down to Livia, like Livia was acting like Livia, which I guess is like what is she supposed to do? But even her voice, like yeah, Tony, like none of the accents were even believable. Like it was like, um, Silvio was like a straight up impersonator. Yeah, uh, Silvio. Paulie was a like a bumbling that. idiot. Like, and it was just like. I don't know. It was like a cheap. It was like a cheap, like made-for-TV movie version of The Sopranos. Maybe, like I said, the acting and those things specifically. Yeah. When I first watched it, were very apparent to me, and I didn't like it. The second time watching it, I didn't mind it so much. Um, the timeline issues, I didn't mind so much the second time. Um, the. The story, maybe because, like, you know where it's going. I was definitely able to follow more. I was definitely, like, it, more excited by it the second time. Um, cause I like the... I like the kind of... The, the way I see it was... You see Dickie Maltesanti and... In the first half of the movie, you see he has this very kind of jaded, tense relationship with his father. You see he doesn't really like the person who his father is. And then by the end, he becomes exactly like his father, including becoming abusive and becoming and and basically murdering uh, his mistress, who is his father's former wife. And that was, a, that was just a weird angle all around. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Maybe. <laughs> I, I mean, when I first read the script, I definitely, like, wasn't a fan of that. But I I saw this... Once your father sticks his penis in someone, how you could then also stick your penis yeah. in the same human being, well, 
I, I, I can't I can't buy that. Well, I I think the th- basic theme of it's Dicky becoming exactly like his father. It's dis- symbolic. Despite yeah. the fact that that's who he's actively trying not to be. Where he's constantly saying that he wants to be a good person, unlike his dad. Um, and what I was saying was just like, you see Dicky not wanting to be like his dad, but becoming exactly like him. And you also mad at me. I'm you, sorry. I, I don't you have a also choice. see it's gonna fall if teenage I don't touch it. Tony Soprano who doesn't want to be like his father, but we know because we've seen the Sopranos that that's exactly what he's going to end up being like, and we know that Christopher Maltesanti is going to end up exactly oh. like Dicky. Um, and. And I saw this basic theme of, like, (laughs) I saw this basic theme. Sorry, James. Oh, I don't I saw this basic theme of just, like, sons, like, fighting to not become like their father and then eventually becoming exactly like them. Yeah, I could see that. Um, And, you know, I see um, many saints of Newark. Many Saints of Newark, is, it parallels The Sopranos, where it's like the Many Saints of Newark is basically like, what type of person you do you become when you have a father who doesn't love you? And The Sopranos is, what type of person do you become when you have a mother who doesn't love you? You know? I Here's what I feel about... I don't have a, any... I don't have any problem with any of that. It was just the execution wasn't done... Maybe. Well enough. All right. Like I like the way you just described that. I'm. I could buy that. I could. Yeah. Bu- I could buy into that. I think that makes for a good movie. I don't think they did it well. Like, you think in a lot of ways they're trying to be too soprano. They're too. They're, much they were sopranos. stuck in the middle. Yeah. They were stuck in the middle because they went so hard with the Sopranos lore and with the marketing that they had no choice but to put in all these like. Yeah. Um. Easter eggs and shit like that. They weren't even Easter eggs. They Silvio were... shouldn't have been in that movie. He, well, sh- he shouldn't have. But everybody, Pussy, uh, Pussy Silvio, shouldn't have been in it either. The only character... Polly, yeah. Livia, e- even making reference to Carmella, making reference to Artie. Like, there was... They were doing all that to please the fans, and, like, they... They were just stuck in the middle between doing just... Just fan worship. Yeah. And, like universe worship and trying to make a movie that you were doing and also trying to put in like the social commentary angle right of like the you know race riot you know like they they didn't even go all the way in on that like that was very surface level i um you know what i mean so obviously we shot it in 2019 and i knew that it wasn't going to uh come out until this year because of covid i knew it was going to get pushed back and then um last summer when you know obviously george floyd and um two summers ago now what was summer 2020 yeah yeah summer 2020 i mean um oh right because uh summer 2020 when george floyd and black lives matter and kind of the riots happened um, I was. I mean, think- Black Lives Matter was around as a movement before, but yes. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Just, but I was thinking like, oh, people are going to see the Newark riots in The Sopranos, and they're going to think that we put that in uh, because of the summer when really we had shot it the summer. Well, early. it's not like George Floyd was the only like. It was probably the. It was definitely the biggest moment. Yeah. Like, but I mean, it's been going on for. In the public eye, right, like, right. Um, obviously, much longer than that. I get your point, though. Like people were saying, like, and people have made that criticism, yes. like, oh, twenty twenty one, yeah, he gets cucked, like, by the the black guy, yeah, like, you know, and it's like, um, but you know, then again, like, there are they they were just trying to do too much. Like you're trying to make a commentary on race, yeah, and you're trying to tell this like kind of telling a Tony Soprano origin story but not really and use the actual guy's kid yeah like and get all this like hype over the top marketing for like the Sopranos 
fans and tell an original story at the same time. Like, right. you know, it almost would have been better if they went, like, more under the radar with it. And, like, David Chase, like, just did, like, a just did that story. And it was, like, set in Sopranos universe, but it wasn't, like, so hyped up. Because I, it just, like, it couldn't do everything yeah. that the expectation I, was. I did have, and and I had this reading the script. My same opinion was that Tony was in it too much. Um, he was in it. He wasn't in it that much, but he was in it too much for how important he was. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Like he, w- yeah, he w- he was in it a lot for someone who is essentially a side character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, like they never went all in on. They never went in on Tony. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, look, I the way I saw it was knowing knowing all the knowing everything that's going to happen later. Like is important for how you view this story. It, it's important it, it's important viewing it knowing that Tony is going to grow up to be a cold-blooded killer just like his father is it's important knowing that the baby Christopher is going to basically grow up exactly like Dickie Maltesanti and I thought I think that it is kind of important that while this is like its own contained story it is everything that happens later is important because it affects how you view these characters um i i feel like the the character who your opinion of him changes the most is probably junior um where what they kind of like didn't do with tony soprano they do they they do well i thought with junior what do they do well with junior you you see why junior is the bitter old man in the sopranos uh because of this movie because we see from this movie that since you know he fairly younger man since you know pretty much the entire of his, entirety of his gangster career he's kind of he's been looked at as a joke yeah and we see that by the start of The Sopranos, he's really tired of it. There's a reason why he's fighting so hard to be taken seriously in The Sopranos, because basically, no one's ever respected him his entire life. Well, he he's always he's like the guy in the royal family that's like not in line to take exactly. over, but he's yeah. always been there. Yeah, and we see like, you know, obvious, you know, there's never we don't like restrain ourselves from spoilers in this podcast ever we at first viewing uh it might confuse people why junior murders dickie at the end um but i think it makes total sense like it's his jealousy it's because the type of person that junior believes he should be the type of respected person that he believes that he should be that is dicky you know when johnny goes to prison he's the one who's supposed to be acting captain but everybody goes to dicky instead you know and even like tony soprano young tony soprano he's supposed to look to junior second as a father figure junior's his biological uncle but instead he looks to dicky and i think 100 percent, it makes sense of why Junior wants Dickie dead, you know. Yeah, but I I don't know that the the way that they do it in the movie is like, oh, he laughed at me because I fell. Now I killed him. Yeah, I feel like maybe they played onto that specific moment too much. Yes, that's another thing. On second viewing, it's just like, oh, they're actually kind of building from the beginning it of is. the jealousy that, and also another. Like to- Tony's Johnny Soprano says to him, like, "Oh, Dickie went away," yeah. and now, like they, th- on second viewing, you do see that they were like planting little seeds a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. But, um, and another thing, so like one of the great, 
scenes and just episodes is when um, Tony basically sends Christopher in in the Soprano series yeah. after the um, retired cop who he says murdered his father. Yes. And I like how they set up the question of is Tony lying? Even You don't know. Even watching this movie, we still don't know if he's lying. One, um, we don't we see that Junior's behind the murder, but we don't see who actually does it. And well, we don't see also like who else knew. Yeah, and who else knew. And I always think it's interesting of just like maybe that cop had nothing to do with the murder at all. I th- you're now you're you're jumping around, but you're talking about the show. Yes. The, the, when Tony said they they see the cop at the at his retirement party, and then cr- he he tells Christopher that. But, Basically, this is the guy who killed your father, and Christopher goes in and kills the guy. Yes. My reading on that, which you always said too, which I think is the truth, is that is that Tony is lying to Chris. But also, like, what is the motivation? Did Tony have some motivation for that guy to be killed? Because that would make a lot more sense. They, we never know. So that's weird. Yeah. But uh, w- watching this, and then watching that scene. Um, does Tony even know the whole story? Because no. it's very possible that they never told him that. Yeah, Junior wouldn't have told that. Him. Junior wouldn't have told anybody. So it's possible Tony is just lying. Um, it's also possible that maybe that's what Tony was told. You know that. Yeah. Uh, you know that Tony himself was also lied to. Yeah. About who actually killed Dickie? I think knowing the person of Tony Soprano, you would it lends more credence to like he was lying to Chris. Yeah. But then again, it's hard to say that if there's not a clear motivation for why Tony wanted that cop to be killed. Yeah. And then even if he did want the cop to be killed, would he need to fabricate a reason? He's a right. mafia boss. He would just have one of his underlings yeah. do a yeah. hit. Yeah. So who knows? I know. And I I kinda like how uh, they semi answer the question, but they kind of don't. You know, well, you you don't know for sure. They sh- definitely don't answer it. Yeah, no, no. They they well, like you find out, um, you know who is behind Dickie Maltasanti's murder. But yeah. in regards to that particular scene, we still like we still don't have any answers to it. Um, I I thought that. It doesn't answer too many of our questions. It doesn't even get super into, like, what their rackets are other than, like, the numbers. Yeah, it, it's numbers. Um, and then, like, they work out of, and I guess, vending machines. Yeah. Uh, I guess numbers and, uh, you know, truck hijacking. Yeah, they don't show a lot of that. No, the, it's very um, it's very light on, like, the actual crime. It's very light on organized crime. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. more about just, like... It, it's more about, like, the inter, inter-family inter drama than it is actually about organized crime. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's, just, it's just not a classic. It's just not up there. It's, not, it's just not going to be up there. I mean... Ray Liotta was, like, awful. I mean, I never really... I mean, I never put it on the same level of, like, the classic gangster movies, you know. No. Even, like, I still like this movie. Uh, I still think it's a good movie. I'm not putting it on the same level as, like, Goodfellas. No. Uh, no you know, obviously. I'm not putting it up there. Um, I I definitely I, I definitely think it's better than the reviews are saying that it is. I agree with that. I agree with that. The reviews are saying, like, it's it's just awful. But, you know, I don't know, man. It's just not... It doesn't know what it wants to be. Yeah, that's really what I keep coming back to. Is it's 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 try. It's just like it does. It doesn't know really what it wants to do at the end of the day. Right. Right. Like, is it a Tony Soprano origin story? Is it this like offshoot story? You know. But then why is there so many Easter eggs for the fans? Yeah. Like it's. It's just spread too thin. Yeah. Um, you know? One of the... So... It's too inconsistent. That's the, the biggest thing I have with this movie. It's just inconsistent through mm-hmm. and through. There's things that I like, 
but there's just way too many things that are that just don't hold up. Yeah, all right. That's my all opinion. Right. No, no, I I understand that. I mean, look, like I get it when I say I like this movie. I can I understand that a lot of people don't. You know? And you know, look, even even if what you're saying there there's nothing wrong with liking a bad movie. Even if there's there's something that is objectively bad that you like, there's nothing wrong with liking it. Um, I I like a lot of I I think that this movie one of the things it does really good is kind of capturing kind of a, Italian culture of the sixties. Um, like I I say a lot that I like kind of the historical aspects of like gangsterism um and i i do kind of feel like they they did a good job of kind of capturing this moment of the late 60s of white flight in newark and you know the brooklyn areas of new york while at the same time the mafia is kind of in control of everything um because you know during this time I brought up in my breakdown Carmine Fatico, who was like John Gotti's, uh, basically John Gotti's mentor when he was a kid, that he was originally in East New York. He moved out to uh, Ocean Park, basically in a white flight situation. Ocean uh, Park? Of Ozone Park. Ozone Park. Yeah. He said Ocean Park. Oh. Um, but basically because of changing demographics in... Uh, those I mean, areas. East, yeah, East New York and, o- and and Ozone Park are on the border of each other too. So yeah, it's yeah. not that big of a But um kind of capturing this time and kind of capturing like the resentment against uh kind of the mafia during this time, especially by gangsters of other ethnicities. Um you know, Frank Lucas is shown in this in this movie. Um and I feel like his inclusion is very important because he was one of the black gangsters of Harlem who decided to go independent from the mafia, who d- started his own smuggling operation independent of what the mafia was doing and made a lot of enemies on that. And it parallels what the character of Harold is trying to do, of creating a numbers operation independent of the mafia. Um, and you see that, like... You know, when we talked about the Westies of Mickey Spillane, who, you know, the Irish boss who was basically trying to distance himself and become independent of uh, the mafia on the west side of Manhattan. And I, f- I feel like it, it captures this moment of, of black gangsters. It's at the end of civil rights who, who are trying to say, like, you know, we should be our own bosses. We shouldn't be giving uh, the Italians money anymore because we're tired of them basically taking everything from us. Yeah. Um, I I like the character of Harold. And I, when I watched this movie, I was, like, trying to remember, like, if he's mentioned at all in The Sopranos. He's not. No. Um, he plays Aaron Burr in Hamilton. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he does. Um, and I, I found this interesting of like reading the script because I didn't recognize that character in the Sopranos, um, series. I was expecting him to die. Like I thought he was going to get killed strictly because, uh, he's not in the Sopranos. But they propped him up to be like a true kind of not a protagonist but he was like he was a very large character in the yeah. film um so. i thought he was gonna get killed by the end but he basically wins you know he he basically wins dicky maltesanti is killed not by harold's hand well, they don't but, tell they don't tell how it plays out yeah you know? but we see that by the end harold is so successful he's able to move into one of the white neighborhoods right. and I, what I talked about was basically since we don't see him 
later in The Sopranos. Um, I feel like we can assume that things don't end well for Harold. Well, that's what I'm saying. You don't see... You're saying it, and he wins at the end, but he, we don't see how that plays out. Like, ex- he, he, he might get murdered. At the final point of the movie, he's yeah. on top. But we know just from, you know, the series of The Sopranos and just how the life of gangsters play out that even if he's on top now, this isn't going to have a happy ending for Harold. No. Um, And even like, you know, because Frank Lucas, he goes to prison. He becomes an informant. You know, for the guy who, the real life gangster who Harold is almost based off of, uh, he himself goes to prison. Is that American gangster based off him? And And the portrayal of Frank Lucas in this movie is much more accurate to the actual Frank Lucas. Well, he's in the movie for 30 seconds. But even but even in the movie for 30 seconds, much more accurate what, to... What, flamboyant, just straight-up drug dealer? Yes. Yeah. That's much more how Frank Lucas actually was. Yeah, as opposed to Denzel Washington. As opposed Washington. to Denzel Washington, who's kind of like, you know, the black tie, the, the suit and tie, and kind of gentleman gangster. Um, right. A lot of people who, like, know a lot about just the history of crime they watch that movie american gangster and it's just like that's not how frank lucas acted you know that's not that's not how he was if you watch like interviews with him you know in the years before he died the dude like i mean he basically he was acting like a fool he was just like his this old man who like just couldn't get it together and you could tell he was just like had abused his body for like henry hill life like henry hill exactly yeah um, and the this portrayal of him is just much, much more accurate. I mean, if you want to see, like, fall from grace of just, like, the interviews of, like, Frank Lucas at the end of his life. Yeah, you're going to check that out. That's interesting. Him and Henry Hill for gangsters, that's, like, best case scenario. Best case scenario is, is you're falling apart at the end of your life. So we know, like, it... Yeah, if you're not dead or in jail. Like, at the end of the movie, like, yeah, obviously I want to know what's going to happen with Harold. I want to see where his story goes. But at the same time, it's like, you want to see where it goes, but you know where it ends. Oh, you know? yeah. And we, and we know... We know from the beginning that this movie is going to end with Dickie getting killed. We we know from the beginning. Well, that yeah, that's true. Because we've seen The Sopranos, that he dies violently. Yeah. And we also know that. I mean, we don't know, I guess, but we we know that Tony Soprano also is going to die violently. We know that Christopher is going to well, die. Well, I don't know. I or or that he's going to be in prison. Or that he's going to be life. in prison. Yeah. Or and we know that. Well, you know, like we time. know that all these characters lives are going to end in tragedy yeah um and that's just kind of that's the point of kind of this show and this movie is that these are doomed characters um i i do kind of like the the like sense of dread throughout the entire movie of just like you know things aren't going to go good and you know dickie multisanti we see him always saying like oh i want to be a good person but we know it's not going to happen for him. Well, yeah, I mean, he beat, within the first ten minutes of the movie, he beats his father to death and sets yeah. his body on fire. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, uh, I like that. <laughs> I well, was... you like that because that was a moment of, like, justice in a sense. Yeah, yeah. For his for his mom, really. For It was justice for his mom and kind of justice for, like, ruining his childhood. Right. Basically. Um, and how he, um, he kind of blames, how, how he burns the, um, burns his warehouse, his warehouse down with his body's, with his dad's corpse in it. And then blames. Uh, and then yeah. blames it basically on the riots. Right. Um, which I mean, Man, before forensics, you could do a lot of shit. You could do a lot of shit. Um, Simpler times. That was kind of... um, 
Like when Harold shoots that kid. Like, bro, it's broad daylight. They got cameras in there. No, they no, don't. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they Damn, don't. They got to bring that back. <laughs> bring, bring back, back no cameras. Making so it easier to murder people. Pop a motherfucker when you need to. Um, you know what I'm saying? That was, uh... It, it's one of the interesting things about just the mindset of an Italian person um, in, like, the 60s of Johnny Soprano, um, you know, the when Italian the black... person in the 60s? What? Those are the only people who who have those thoughts about, like, white flight? No, no, no. Well, all right, there, here's what I'm trying to say. Johnny Soprano in the scene... Uh, when he comes home from prison and he find, and there's a black family who's lived down the block from them and he can't believe that um, he takes that it a black, as a sign that a that that black family has come into his neighborhood and yeah. it's just like hey man it it wasn't so long ago yeah, that the, you know the don't. white Protestants were saying that about you yeah but but historically people don't yeah. ever make that those connections or the like, united well, states of amnesia That's what yeah exactly you um, know and he's taking it as a sign that like he did something wrong or like they're 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 uh you know it's the same thing you hear like racist fucking real estate people on long island like yeah you know property values and shit like that and like they newsday just did a study like a year or two ago about how like they steer people away from different neighborhoods i mean yeah it's still 50 something years later it's like sadly still rampant yeah um i like john burn uh john bernthal i thought did good as as johnny soprano um he did he he didn't have much to really do no and that that relationship between tony and johnny um, they spend no time on. We don't spend a lot of time on, and because uh, it it's kind of supposed to almost parallel Dickie and his father, because we know that Tony is going to become exactly like his dad, um, and we know that uh, at the end of the movie when Tony Soprano has these stolen uh, speakers stereo speakers that he got from Dickie and he's throwing them out the window because he's saying like I don't want any part of it yeah. uh, but we know just like saying the theme of the Sopranos is that I these are I don't want any part of it <laughs> like oh sorry that was that was cringy look he he doesn't have the makings of a of a leading <laughs> actor <laughs> he doesn't have That's the makings the right there. of a leading actor uh, that, that was good I yeah. hold on I don't shout think out he, to Michael Gandolfini I'm sure no 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 I, uh, first guy. of all I've met Michael Gandolfini he, he's a great guy um, I I don't think he's bad per se I think that he's a supporting actor. Bare, I, barely. That that's my opinion is that he that he's not a lead man and that they gave him too much to do in this movie. Also, like the the I mean the fact that it's James Gandolfini's son playing know, Tony I, is it's kind of weird. I don't know why they did that. It's kind of weird, honestly. Um, I I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I didn't I, mind that they tried it, but it just didn't really land. Yeah. I thought it was, like, cool that they tried it, to be honest. Like, I was like, oh, wow, it's his son. Like, But that was the thing. Like, they were, like, ramped it up. Like, oh, it's James Gandolfini's son yeah. playing Tony Soprano. But then it's not about Tony Soprano. Yeah. And even though they did they gave him a shot but like he just he didn't have any of the hard edge that like I'm sorry like by the time Tony was 16 he was definitely a bad motherfucker the the definitely. time the timeline is screwed up definitely yeah like by the time he was 16 I'm sure he had his own little fucking crew of minions well they said you know what I mean uh, I forget all right there's a there's a scene where Ralph Cifaretto is talking about how him and Tony had like their own crew. Yeah, and they robbed the and car. They robbed it. I I'm not sure if he's referring to like 
they're them probably, as teenagers no, or them as like, like early twenties. I got I got more like they were around twenty. 20 yeah, you know, like um, I I never got a sense of how old Tony is supposed to be in this movie. I'm, well, I'm guessing like, in like high fifteen school. or sixteen. He's, like in, he's high school. in high school. Yeah. Yeah, and I think by the time he was in high school, he must he had to have been way tougher than that. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't see him becoming a gangster at all. No. Like um and we know by I think um I feel like the younger version of Tony was more believable. Yeah. than the middle version. You know? I I could see that. Um, Anyway. Yeah. I liked... uh, So, working on this movie... Break it down. (laughs) Now that you can. Uh, Well, some details I'm not going to talk about. Uh, That's classified information. (laughs) I did not know that they were going to do a... I did not know that... (laughs) <laughs> I did what not know that uh, Michael Imperioli was going to do a voiceover. Yes. Uh, that was a surprise. Um, I like it. I like how it, it, you know, it goes into, you know, my longstanding kind of thesis of The Sopranos is that, like, you know, all these characters are destined to go to hell. Uh, and that, like, there's nothing to do. Your long-standing thesis. My long-stand... Well, because, like, one of our first videos, I was talking about, yeah. like, no, yeah, all these characters are destined to go to hell. It's true. Um, and, you know, just the fact of Christopher telling the story from beyond the grave uh, is very important because, uh, you know, he's basically with his father at the end. He knows all the details because, you know, he's with his father in hell. Whoa, <laughs> that was deep. Is that, it, that's not like explicitly. That's like your own thing. No, that's my own thing. I like that though. Is that he knows everything that happened to his father, but and he knows everything that happened to Tony because Tony is also there in hell. Right. Uh, and that's where they're going to end up because they're in the, the Irish second bar. You, the second you burn that saint in your hand when you're being made, that's you selling your soul. Whoa. And in the end, you, you, you could have wrote a better script than David Chase did, <laughs> or he didn't write the script. Also, so another, so another reason I was worried about this movie is that I'm not the biggest fan of the director. Um, who, who directed it? Uh, Alan Taylor is his name, and he did some of the show. He did it. He did a couple of episodes. Um, Just a couple. Yeah, he did. He did a few episodes. Uh, I don't know the exact amount. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I wanted, like, somewhere around, like, uh, three, four, or five oh, episodes. Oh, so he wasn't one of the main ones. Well, I don't I don't think there are many directors well, who guys are doing, who did, like, like, multiple, multiple episodes. Really? Didn't Terry Winter do, like, Oh, besides gang? Terry Winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Terrence Winter. Besides him, who's, who's done a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, there weren't that many, like, mainstay directors. Okay. Um... He also directed one of the Thor movies that wasn't that good. Mm. Um, and I knew this director who was kind of just like, when a studio like wants a director... T- I'm, I'm going to sound like I'm talking shit about the guy, but it's, it's just like when a studio wants a director to just do what they're told, you know, he's one of those guys. He's like an Aaron Boone to, to, to Brian <laughs> Cashman. Yeah. Shout out to Aaron Boone. When, when it's Your just boy like, just re-signed you know, for three years. When when it's just like, we want a guy who's not going to try to do his own thing, who's just going to do what we tell him. Uh, I I feel like he's that. That's my honest and opinion. And what's David him. Chase's role here? Executive producer. Uh, and he wrote the script. Him and Alan Taylor wrote the script. Okay. Um... That was another thing of uh, Michael Francis of, you know, he does YouTube uh, videos now and everything, and he was breaking down uh, The Many Saints of Newark. And, you know, he gave it a bad review, which, you know, a lot of other people did. That's fine. But, like, the reasons that he uh, 
wasn't a fan are like the dumbest reasons ever. Basically yeah, well, trying to say like he's a fool. Okay, <laughs> get lost. Thanks for the call. What what else can you say about working on the movie? Because I mean that's a perspective that all right. Well, is not a common one on YouTube world. It it was cool because one we we took this street in downtown Newark and basically just turned it into 1960s Newark. And you you should have seen just the amount of storefront signs that were built of uh, in Bethpage, basically like lining down of just all these different storefront signs and recreating um, basically the entire street. I was there. I got lunch at Holstein's uh, like one of the days of prep. Is that was that in Newark or Long Island? That's that's in Newark. Holstein's is is the um, is the restaurant where the last scene is shot. Okay. Wait. Oh, the last scene of the Sopranos. Of the Sopranos. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, that's on that strip that we basically turned into 1960s Newark, and then uh, on the nights that they created the riots. Yeah. I mean, they closed down these streets and basically just recreated the the 67 New York riots um Newark Newark riots um what do you mean that was, they were basing it off of like footage and shit like well, well they basically like when you say recreate they had that many extras come in I, I'm saying, what were they? They were basing off. Oh of no, that no! I'm just saying, like, if you were there shooting, it seemed like you were back in 1968, 67, okay. and the riots were happening. Yeah, you know. So it looked realistic. When it you looked were there. extremely realistic. I was walking down the street; it felt like I was in the 60s. And really, yeah, that's cool. It it was one of the coolest things ever. Um, it, everything that went into shoot. I mean. I had a bunch of pictures of the set on my old phone, and they all got deleted, and I'm so mad about. But oh, that house that it up. that house that Tony grows up I in, mean, uh, yes. that house that gr- Tony grows up in, we built that entire house. I lost my photos too. I had photos on my old phone because I visited the set one day. We, we we built that entire house inside of the studio in Bethpage. We literally built an entire house inside of the Bethpage studio. Um, that that was probably like Wait, just was that house even used? Yeah, yeah, that was the house that Tony grows up in. That was the oh. Newark house. Yeah. So that's like the coming home party for Johnny. yeah, yeah. That was all. That was stage. all built inside of uh, Gold Coast Studios. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Um, it was awesome, and the Satriali set was awesome. That, I saw the Satriali set. When I walked into there, it's like you walked into a scene of The Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. That was like... That was just... That was fucking unbelievable. It, that was probably one of, like, the most impressive just builds I've ever seen. Absolutely. That's um, Gary I, I, I just thought it was... Everything about it was so cool. Um, everything about working on it was so cool. Uh, you know, the script that I read was a bit different mm-hmm. than I. Don't, I don't know if I can really get into that, yeah. but I can say that the script that, that I read was a bit different than what was put to, um, not not by a lot, uh, than mm-hmm. what was put to screen. Um, different in a better way or a worse way? Let's say a better way. Okay. Uh, we. I have a question because I heard this theory going around. When Dicky visits his uncle in prison, yeah, the theory is the uncle never existed; that he was just making that up in all in his head as kind of a way to um, get over the fact that he murdered his father. Or I, like, I could totally see that. You do. Yeah, especially since, like, it's his twin brother and it's literally Ray Liotta playing the uncle. And also, like, what was the purpose of any of that? Yeah. Like, what was that... That uncle... (sighs) Yeah, that seems like a dream sequence thing. It seemed like something that would have been, like, a dream sequence from the original Sopranos series. I'm on board with that theory. Yeah. I kind of am, too. You know? The... 
I would have liked a dream. Actually, no, nah, that would have been too Sopranos esque well, if they put like a straight up dream sequence. I mean, into they it. had literal like. Your sister's gun. And uh, you know. I wouldn't like, have mind that if he only he said never it had once. the var- <laughs> Yeah. The varsity athlete went fine. If if they didn't I say had, that I in the movie, it. I would have been mad. I enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's officially fucking freezing. Yeah. Are we wrapping this up? Let's go for it. All right. The Many Saints of Newark. Look, some people liked it. Some people didn't. Maybe watch it. Who make your it? own opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Who liked it other than you? No, I liked it. I mean, it was enjoyable as a movie. I enjoyed it. Here's the thing. Again, it was going up against the fucking legacy of The Sopranos. That's also, such a fucking hard, you know. I should also mention uh, it failed financially uh, because they released it on HBO Max the same day it was released in theaters. So people had a choice of either watch it for free on HBO Max or go to theaters and see it, and they obviously chose to watch it for free. Well, we supported it in the theater. We did, and we brought this to the theater with us, and we wore and we wore tracksuits to the theater. This is a a gift that the crew received. Gregory received this as he was a member of the crew. You can see right here, Crew 2019. There you go. Look, man, even if the movie sucks, like, I love The Sopranos, and I love everything about it, and, hold up, did you see Vinny Pastor, uh, Pastore's, like, new commercial, yeah, amazing. where he plays the Gabagool, um, one of, there was a tweet about it, uh, that was like, I know you can't be racist against Italians, but I feel like this is pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Many Saints of Newark, um, the Sopranos prequel movie. Um, I'm I'm your host, Greg. Um, If you like this uh, podcast, you can check out our YouTube channel where we have the videos of all our podcasts. Um, We also have clips. Uh, of like individual segments so if you'd like to watch that uh, instead of watching it you know the whole hour thing at once you watch little clips of it we have those as well we also have my like 10 minute breakdowns uh, shorter breakdowns of kind of the themes and kind of the goals of each uh, you know topic each piece of uh, art that we're talking about each week Uh, you could follow us on social media at Movies by McManus, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, I'm your host, Greg. What's up? I'm your host, Greg's brother, Mike. Uh, thank you, James, for and holding James. the microphone this whole fucking yes. time. And Very James sorry is our about producer. That. I hope your arms still work because you need them to shoot. Um, and we'll see you later. And have a good night.